2006. Two days in the Chihuahuan Desert near the Rio Grande. They came from all over the world for XPRIZE to see what's next in aviation and aerospace technology. Experimental aircraft, lunar landers, the second man to walk on the moon. They'd witness amateur rockets blaze through the New Mexican sky. One of those was by a boy from Pittsburgh, a superbly handcrafted 180-pound rocket standing 21 feet and rivaling military-sized missiles. It was the seed of a dream for the inspired 21-year-old. Woody Hoberg's obsession with rocketry would not end at X Prize. One hour from now, Pat. One hour from, one hour from now. We we'll leave now. We we'll leave now. Okay. Okay. Good luck, Woody. Copy okay. that, Ryan. We're uh, rolling out to the pad here with my flag rocket. Getting, uh, we've got one hour to launch, so we're gonna do a rather quick prep. Uh, all that's left to be done with the rocket is to put the motor in. We're flying it on an O today, so we need to put that in the back end. We need to go ahead and get it uh, situated on the rail. Uh, arm the electronics, arm the two altimeters that are in it, and uh, turn it vertical, and then uh, put the igniter in and we'll be ready to go. X Prize. You'll go to install igniters and launch. We'll come down, we'll give you a three-minute second, three minute count. Triple Ops, roger. After we put the rocket on the pad, we bring it, uh, you know, we we head back uh, to the range head at a safe distance, and then uh, the countdown starts. And at that point, you don't have any control over what's happening. You know, you just, you hope you did everything right. So uh, with, with about five seconds left, my heart's racing. Uh, you know, it's... <laughs> I've done this a lot of times, but it's, it's always the same. It's just, you're so nervous. Okay, Four, three, two, launching. One, two, Here it goes. The place where stuff can really go wrong is recovery. You have to get the rocket down safely, and you're deploying parachutes with altimeters. You've got black powder charges that need to separate the rocket watch the drug come out and get happy. <laughs> Woody, check out the onboard. No way. It went well. <laughs> Everything perfect as far as I can tell. We'll go out there and see if there's any damage. But uh, we had good boost. Uh, Pat's motor was absolutely phenomenal. We had a uh, drug just after Apogee. We had a great main release, real clean deployment, and uh, looks good. The rocket, as it came down, it just stuck right in the mud, which is insanely rare. It stuck the landing. Spin can perfectly upright, uh, about 30 feet off the runway. So, perfection. I have to retire it now. I was debating, but now it's retired. That was its final flight, and pretty much as perfect as it can be. And then after I fly it, I crate it all back up really fast, send it off, toward FedEx so it's headed home and uh, I fly back to Boston my parents pick it up at the FedEx terminal and and leave it they have to store it at their house they're great they uh, they you know take care of me it's they're very understanding one of the biggest concerns I have uh, is you know people that that could care less about the space program and wish we didn't spend money on it. I just, for me, that's just offensive. I, it, it's so important to me. It's pushing another frontier, you know. Congratulate the newest class of American heroes, the 2017 class of America's astronauts. Ladies and gentlemen, our next newest astronaut, Woody Hoberg. <laughs> I'm now an NASA astronaut. The dream of the inspired kid with his garage-built rocket was now aboard a million-pound Falcon 9 on his own trip to space. Three, two, one. Engine full power and lift off. Go Dragon, go Falcon. Go Falcon. Go Falcon. I feel so lucky that I get to fly on this amazing machine. To orbit in his new home, the International Space Station. <laughs>